Hey guys, uh, this series of videos is going to show you how to uh, complete the challenges, the achievements, and to uh, get the badges for uh, Carnegie Mellon's uh, CS2N.org. So let's jump right in. Now if you're in my class, uh, you're going to want to very first go and follow all of the login steps that you're supposed to follow. So that means opening up a browser. And let's do that right now. I'm going to use Google Chrome, but you can use uh, Internet Explorer or Edge. Whatever comes up is fine. And the very first thing you want to do is go to my.ysd.net and log in. And once you're logged in, click on Google. And this will ensure that you're logged in fully to your account. Okay, so now I can see my avatar up here, so I know I'm logged in fully to my account. Then if I go to myhaikuclass.com, my H-A-I-K-U-C-L-A-S-S.com, myhaikuclass.com, it'll take me to a page like this, and I can click Sign In with Google, and that'll use more my YISD email. You see I have a couple here. I'm going to use my YISD account, which will log me in, and I'm currently a student for this uh, class, Automation and Robotics. If I click on that, here we go. So today is uh, September 10th, 2018, and the today's goals is real simple. It just says continue working on your badges, and it says click here. Now that link is going to take me to this CS2N lessons over here. You'll see. Watch if I click it and it goes to CS2N Lessons. On this page I have a schedule. Uh, the first nine week schedule, it shows which badges are due on which days. Um, and then right below that, there is a video here that explains how to um, basically do the first few uh, uh, badges, or the first few check marks for the basic movements badge. I'm gonna do that also right now. So if you click on Complete, basic movement. If you click on any of these badges, it's going to take you to the same place. So I'll do that now. It's going to take me to the CS2N login page. Now, again, my sign-in credentials might show up there automatically, but I'm going to go ahead and sign in with a student ID that I created for myself. So it's going to look just like yours, except for you're going to put in your student ID number. That's your lunch number. I've created that for you. And the password is BAMS one, two, three, four. So it's your lunch number and then BAMS one, two, three, four. If you're on a public computer, you don't want it to save your password, okay? Keep that in mind. All right. Then I'm gonna scroll down and choose getting started. And getting started is real simple though. It really, all you do is watch the videos and complete the test. Once you've done that, you'll receive that badge. So I'm not going to actually do that one in this video. I'm going to straight go straight to the Vex IQ basic movements, CS2N ed. All right. So the very first link is introduction to SenseBot. If I click that, there's a video here that de describes uh, the basic movements of uh, SenseBot. So basically, it's saying. Uh, basically what's the setting up the whole point of this lesson so I would recommend that you you watch that video and then it asks some questions down here those questions aren't required but they will test your understanding make sure you got what you needed to from that video you can see over here on the left I've already gotten the check mark that says that I basically have have seen this page if I click next this page basically has the configuration requirements for the robot that we're going to use in this challenge. Uh, here it's saying that if you use the VEX or the Virtual VEX IQ, then you're going to choose this configuration in Robot Virtual Worlds, the Clawbot IQ. We'll see that here in a minute. If you're going to do this with a physical robot, there's a link here for PDF instructions on how to actually make that robot. For our purposes, we're going to use Virtual World. If you click Next, you're going to get your first instructions on how to complete uh, a basic task of moving the robot forward. 
you can see here this video is just a minute and 58 seconds long. It's real simple. And it does have a file over here, but uh, we're going to go ahead and skip that. Uh, what we're going to do now is open up Robot C. And we're going to try it out. Okay, so I'm going to minimize this window. And I'm going to look for this link here. This is graphical Robot C for VEX Robotics 4.x. If you can't find that, or if it's not showing, or if it's just the circle one that says Robot C, then click the little window icon and start typing G R A P H and you should see graphical robot C for VEX Robotics 4.x. If you don't see that, then it's probably not installed on your computer and you'll need to get that installed. And that, that's probably something you would watch a different video for. So I'm gonna open up the graphical robot C for VEX Robotics. This program is designed to be uh, for you to create uh, programs and download them to actual robots. So Right now, if you go under Robot Compiler Target, it says Physical Robot. We need to change that to Virtual Worlds. Then click New File, and you're pretty much ready to go. If you click Download to Robot, it's a blank file, but I'm still going to save it as my last name in the Documents folder, so I can get to it again later. At this point, it opens up a uh, virtual world, the challenge pack. Um, that is another thing. If it doesn't show the challenge pack, I'm going to close this, then you might be on the wrong virtual world. And if you go under Window, select Virtual World to Use, you should be under the challenge pack for VEX IQ. And if you're not, then you're going to want to change to that one. And so since I closed it, when I clicked Download, it reopened it. At the CS2N website, we logged in with a username and a password, and it was the student ID that I gave, or that you had, and the password was BAMS1234. Uh, I created my own student ID number and password, and so I'm going to go ahead and log in. And now that I'm logged in, whatever I do in Virtual Worlds is linked to the website and what's done there. And so the very first program is basically it just says use this table to try your very first program. Well, if I click start challenge, if I click play, nothing's going to happen. Um, so really nothing's going to happen because there's no program. So I'm going to click back and I'm going to say forward one rotation at 50 and say download. Anytime I make a change here, I need to download it. And then if I click play, it'll run that, that code. It's a success. Okay, so now I'll click Main Menu, and then I'll click on the Moving Forward Challenge, and then click Start Challenge. Now, I don't have to change my code because basically this challenge is just to move forward, so I'll click Play. Now, it didn't move forward enough, apparently. So this is saying the opening move, it has to move forward, let's say, uh, three rotations. And I think that's actually in the video right here it's saying three rotations at 50 and again this video is only about a minute or it's a minute and 58 seconds so it talks about how to do everything okay so it's a really good video to watch but I'm basically showing you how to do that right now okay so we are on the moving forward program start challenge make sure that I had uploaded or downloaded that so click download now it's going to make the motors go three rotations. One, two, three. Basically, there you go. And anytime you've completed a, uh, a little uh, chunk, it's going to give you an achievement. And so this progress badge has been earned. And basically, it's just called it an achievement. I'll click Main Menu. So there you go, under Achievements, Opening Move. So I got that progress. The next one is going to be the 50 centimeter challenge. And I'm going to go ahead and just select that right now, 50 centimeter challenge, and click Start Challenge. If I go to the website, you'll see here if I click Next, oh, and there's some questions down here too. Uh, and there's also some additional uh, challenges that you can do, for instance, to try going backward. What happens if you use the backward command? Uh, I'm sure you can figure that out. 
uh, time-based movement. Uh, you can change it from rotations to seconds. And, uh, and you have to remember that if you uh, go uh, faster at the same number of seconds, you're going to go further. If you go slower at the same number of seconds, you're going to go not as far. Um, but if you're using rotations, then it doesn't matter what speed, you'll, could, you'll go the same distance. You just maybe won't go get there as fast, or you might get there faster, depending upon the speed. And so then you have speed control. It talks about how to change the speed. Um, so there's some good information here. And the site's going to pretty much follow this, uh, this format where it goes through and shows you the essentials that you need to know to complete the activity. So now when I click next to go to the 50 centimeter challenge, I'm going to see here, I'm going to have to look at the whole page. It says there's an achievement av available. Complete this challenge in Robot Virtual Worlds to earn this achievement. The Virtual World is the challenge pack for VEX IQ. We've already selected that. I've shown you where to do that. Um, that is already something we're on. You can see it says challenge pack on the Virtual World window. And then the level is the 50 centimeter challenge or classic. Well, if you click this little home button, it says 50 centimeter challenge. I don't know what it means by or classic, but this is the correct one. And then you click start challenge. Now it says robot, uh, clawbot IQ. Again, if I go back here to the home and you'll see there's a little button here that says robots, there's some different robots to choose from. Um, but basically, if you uh, go to the 50 centimeter challenge and say start challenge. It's going to recommend you use the uh, I, the, uh, the the clawbot IQ anyway. Um, so right now it's already selected. I'll click start challenge. So what exactly are we supposed to do? Well, again, if I scroll down on this page and I say it says program your robot to travel 52 centimeters. Place two pieces of tape 52 centimeters apart. And this is if you're doing a physical robot. Um, and so what I would do is, by tri trial and error, I'm going to say three rotations. Actually, I'm going to say uh, two uh, rotations. Download the robot. And then push play and see what happens. So incomplete. It says you did not make it to the target. So I'm going to try three rotations. And I want to make it go faster. I don't want to wait a long time, so I'm going to change that to 100. Download the robot, and 100 is the fastest you can make these motors go. I'm going to push that reset button and then click play. All right. It says incomplete. You did not make it to the target. Okay. The funny thing about this is we figured out from trial and error, if you were to look at uh, this real close, you'll notice that it, it went way past the 50 centimeter mark. And I think what it's looking for is it, the 50 centimeter needs to be somewhere around here. It's weird. We didn't know if it was at the wheel or at the claw, but we figured it out. It's at 2.25. So I'm just going to give you that answer right now and say download. And then I'm going to reset. And if you want to get zoom in and zoom out, you can use your scroll wheel. Uh, you can look overhead uh, in, with these little camera views. Number three, you can click and in, uh, in drag, pull around. Okay, So I'm going to zoom in and see exactly where it falls on this line. I'm going to click play. And you can see right there, for some reason, it, it, it registers it when it goes onto the 50 centimeter line, like right there in the center of the robot. Um, and I think the reason for that, let's say continue. Yeah, the, the reason for that is it look where it starts. It doesn't start behind the zero. It starts right there. This back wheel is on the zero. So if we wanted to go 50 centimeters, this back wheel right here needs to actually hit. So I don't even think it went far enough. So let's say 2.2, so it's 2.3, I bet. And then that going so fast probably has some more forward momentum, probably brings it back or brings it past the line more than it should go. So let's say play, and there you go. So it's still saying success, but really it's, it hasn't gone quite 50 centimeters. So 
you know, it's not perfect, but it's close. All right, so I'm going to close. The, no, I'm going to leave that open. Go back to home, and then we're ready for the next challenge. So I'm going to go uh, back to the website, and if I click next, remember this user ID up here and the user ID that I signed in to Virtual Worlds is the same. So if I click next, this web page is going to refresh and it'll give me that um, it'll give me that achievement watch and I'll get this check mark right here. So if I were to go back to look at the activity, you can see that's not gray anymore. So if you click next and you go to arm control and under activity 50 centimeter, you don't see that check mark there. It could be a couple things. It could be that you're not signed into the correct account either on the web page or you're not signed into the correct account on robot uh, on robot C virtual worlds. You could do that by going here. You could just say log out and then just log back in again to make sure you're in the right one. Okay, and then make sure that you've done the correct challenge. So you're going to want to uh, here. How do I do that? Badges, right? So if you click on badges, you can see I've got my opening move badge and my 50 centimeter badge. Okay and first program forward 50 centimeter challenge and you can see I also have the little star there for having completed that. All right. I'm going to go back to the website and see arm control. This is a two minute video it talks about how to move the arm. Uh, you can see here uh, just on this page it's showing uh, we're going to use the move motor command to move the arm up and move it down and let's see basically Yeah, so that's easy. Okay, I'm going to just show you how to do that right now. Uh, we'll go to uh, go here. I'm going to select the forward command, drag it down to the trash can, and then we're going to say move motor. And I'm going to select arm motor in this little drop down menu right here. And it's saying rotations. Instead of rotations, we're going to use degrees. We get a little bit more uh, accuracy. If I did 365 or 360 degrees, 360 degrees is a full rotation. But in the video they say to do 315 degrees, which is not a full rotation. And in order to do that in rotations, you'd have to say like 0.98 or something. And so this makes it a lot more easier. And this makes it a lot easier to do. Um, you can uh, be more precise and more specific. Okay, so here we go. Move motor 315 degrees. That's going to make it go up. And then I'm going to say move motor again. And then I'm going to change this to arm motor again. And then I'm going to do negative 315 degrees to make it go back down to where it was. Say download to robot, and then let's see arm control, start challenge, and then I like to change my view so I can get a better look at it. So I'm going to drag around here, and then push play. The arm goes up, and, and then back down. There you go. I got armed but not dangerous, so that's cool. I got that little achievement. We'll go back to the menu, and that's it. I'll go back to the website. Okay, what does the move motor command block do? It moves the robot forward? No. Runs a single motor in the way the command sp specifies? That's true. Moves a motor to a different port, sets the motor to a different mode. So if I click on that, it turns blue, saying I got it right. Uh, if I selected something else, it would have turned red and will give me another chance to answer it. So what happens when you set a negative speed value? Uh, the robot can't go slower. See, if I click that, it's wrong. So it would say the motor runs backwards. And then what happens when you put more than one command in a program? It only runs the first one. Uh, they run in order according to their line numbers. Are all commands run at once? Or only one command can be added at a time? Well, they run in order based on their line numbers. So I understand that. 
now here we go. It says try it. LED feedback. It can be hard to tell which part of the program the robot is running when your programs have multiple steps. Add a touch LED color command to these spots in your program with different colors to visually see how your robot is running your program. You could do that. Um, the, the tough part with that is in virtual worlds, I don't think you can really see it very easily. So I'm just going to skip that. And uh, here's an interesting thing. It says the arm motor needs to turn 315 degrees to move the arm between the up and down positions. But the arm itself does not move 315 degrees. This is because the gears that connect the motor to the arm are not the same size. And you see that right there. The gear on the motor is very small compared to the gear that it's actually attached to on the arm. The smaller gear will need to turn many times in order to turn the larger gear around even once. However, this configuration also provides the motor with a mechanical advantage. It's trading more rotations for more strength as it turns. This allows the motor to keep the arm under control even when the robot is holding something that makes the arm heavy. Okay, and how do we avoid it getting stuck? Well, so it says the claw motor, it's safer to use seconds than to use rotations, okay? So when controlling the claw motor with the move motor command block, you should consider using seconds or milliseconds as the unit type. By choosing timing, you will prevent a scenario where the move motor command block cannot complete its movement and halts the program flow. In other words, if you're doing a claw and you say one rotation and the motor turns half a rotation and the claw stops, that there's a mechanical stop and it cannot keep turning the motor. The motor's going to keep on trying to do a full rotation until the program resumes to the next line. So basically you're stuck. You would never advance to the next line. But if you do one second, even if it only takes it a tenth of a second to close, it'll keep going for that nine tenths of a second, but then it'll stop no matter where the claw is. All right, if it took two seconds to close the claw, which it doesn't, but if it did and you only ran it for a second, well then it would only go halfway uh, and then you could just adjust the amount of time. But using the timing will ensure that it doesn't get stuck. So we're going to follow that suggestion. It says, consider this scenario. The VEX IQ claw is already open to its max position. Oh yeah, and you were to say continue to you know, open it two rotations. It's not going to do that. But if you did two seconds, uh, it'll just try for two seconds uh, and then it'll stop and move on to the next step. Okay, so basically what I just described. All right, so I'm going to click next. And I see here I have the gripper control challenge. So complete this challenge in Robot Virtual Worlds to earn this achievement. Create a program so the robot opens its claws, moves forward to the object, grips the object with its claws, then moves back to the start. All right, so instead of the arm motor, I'm going to use the claw motor. But it did say that, uh, let's see here, uh, it did say that I needed to move forward to the object, grip the object with this claws, and then move back to the start. So move forward, forward for, let's say, three rotations. And I don't like a slow robot, so I'm going to do a fast robot at 100. And then instead of the claw motor doing degrees, I'm going to move it for one second. And at 50 speed is just fine. So I'm going to download that and give it a shot. Uh, the website said the name of the challenge was Gripper Control. So I'm going to go over here and say Gripper Control Challenge, Start Challenge. And then again, I like to change my view a little bit. Let's see, play. So I'm going forward. I don't know if three is enough. Oh, three was not enough, but it did close the gripper, so that's good. Um, let me hit reset. I think probably three and a half. 
uh, rotations looks like what I would need, 3.5 rotations. And the claw motor looks good, download. And I think the virtual worlds, I think all it does is require you to go up and grab the block. So let's just say that, let's see what happens. Come on, in. okay, so get a grip and continue so we got it activity cargo transport all right and it's saying that we're gonna grab it pick it up and move it and set it down claw motor and let's just do one second and then I'm gonna raise it so move motor arm motor and I'm gonna do 315 degrees because that's what we figured out it kinda needs to go at and then I'm going to move forward, right? I think probably three and a half rotations again. Then I'm going to put the arm down, so arm motor. And in order to go down, I'm going to do negative 315 degrees. And then I'm going to let go, so move motor. So claw motor, I'm going to do one second, but this time I'm going to do negative 50, which is going to run the motor backwards. And then I'm going to make the robot go backwards. Let's say, again, three and a half rotations. And that should be it. So here, what I have is I have the claw is going to squeeze, the arm's going to go up, it's going to go forward. The claw is going to unsqueeze, or the arm's going to go down, the claw is going to unsqueeze, and then it's going to go backwards. So let's download it to the robot and see if it actually does that. And I'm going to change my view again. So play, it squeezed it, it raised it, it's moving forward, oh, and drops it, releases it, and then let's see, it goes back. Awesome. And that's how that's done. So we've completed the cargo transport challenge and then we're gonna click next. Here you have a page that has code review. So if you move your mouse over the different parts of the code, it gives you a, a description of what's happening. So this is a good opportunity for you to review what you've already learned. So you're gonna wanna go through this page and really kinda look at that and study that. Um, really all you have to do is look at that and, and review it. And I'm gonna click next. The challenge sense a bot uh, this is again, this is a, a 25 second video. It's telling you what the challenge is. Uh, and if you notice right here, it says for uh, this challenge, program your VEX IQ robot to move from its starting location to three different lines, stopping at each line to perform an inspection represented by lowering and raising the robot's arm. Uh, after completing inspections all three times, or all three lines, the robot should then back up and return to its home uh, to its starting location. So here we have a visual description of it. It goes forward, raises uh, the arm, and then lowers it. Goes forward, raises the arm, lowers it. Goes forward, raises the arm, and lowers it, and then goes all the way back. Um, the first thing I want to find out is how many, uh, what the distance is to the first line. Um, so I'm going to go to the Sensibot Challenge click start challenge. I just need to know how it is far it is to that very first line right there. So I'm gonna go back here I'm gonna do a new file and then I'm gonna say forward uh, let's just say two rotations and then I don't like a slow robot I like a fast robot so I'm gonna change the speed to 100 and then I'm gonna save this as Johnston 1 save okay all right now push play see if two rotations does it doesn't look like two rotations does it uh, let's say three rotations this is just the process of trial and error okay it looks like and actually that looks like it might be too many I'm gonna say 2.5 and then at that point, uh, let's say download, then we have to raise the claw and lower the claw. 
or raise the arm and then lower the arm. So that looks good. So in order to raise the arm, it's move motor and it's the arm motor. Really, this is just putting together everything that we've already learned, right? And degrees and then move motor, arm motor, negative 315 degrees. And then we're going to do that all over again, right? So I'm going to show you something. If you click on it on the forward line and then hold down the shift key and click on move motor, then on the keyboard, if you do control C, then click somewhere else, control V, control V. And so you're just pasting it, right? I'm going to download that. And it should do it three times. So I'm going to reset here. So it goes through this first, raises, lowers, goes to the next one, raises, lowers, goes to the next one, raises, and lowers. And then to go all the way back, I've got two and a half, two and a half, and two and a half. That's seven and a half. So I'll go backward. Seven point five rotations, and again, I don't like a slow robot, so I'll do hundred. Download the robot, refresh, try it again. And if I didn't like how slow that claw or arm was going up and down, I could change that speed too. I have it set at the default fifty. That's why it's not going up super fast and, and down super fast. Change my view here and see. There you go. And that's all there is to that one. Done and done. So once you've completed the sense bot, um, you should have your code still. Uh, make sure that you save your code. I saved mine as Johnston1. And then when you go to the website, uh, you're going to click next. And I should get the checkbox because I completed the sense bot challenge. Come on and then it says upload. Now I say upload artifact, choose file, and then I've got under documents, Johnston 1 is what I saved it as, say open, and then upload artifact. And that's really all there is to that one. Click next to take the quiz. I'm not going to do that on camera because it wouldn't be much of a quiz for you if I gave you all the answers. So be right back after the quiz. Okay, I hope you did well on the moving forward quiz. Uh, the next is the introduction to Orchard Tractor. Um, here we're going to watch a video, it's a minute, and it just talks about autonomous movement and how it's, uh, things are doing things by themselves. Okay, um, So in order to do that we have to uh, program the robot a specific way. Remember, you have this configuration. Again, it's, it's showing it's the Clawbot IQ, uh, and then there's some build instructions. So we've seen this before. You just click Next. Turning in place. Okay. Again, there's a minute and 23 second video here. It talks about turning in place. So in order to do that, uh, the direction of the turn, uh, the right turn makes the robot turn right in place. What happens if you use the turn left command? Well, of course, it turns left. Okay, and then units of turn, you can do degrees to get more specific. Now, you have to remember that when you set degrees, you're setting the degrees of the motor turn, not of the actual robot turning. All right, and we see here it says, from the change you made above, change the value of the first box to 270 and try it. Okay, how much did the robot turn? And this is just trying things out, seeing what, what happens. All right. And there's some good information here. Okay. So it's talking about the direction of those motors and which direction it turns. So uh, if the right motor is moving forward and the left motor is moving backward, then the robot is going to turn left. So um, that's something good to know. Uh, let's see, we've already got the turning in place, so if we click next. And now we have a challenge where we have to turn the robot 90 degrees. 
So it says program the robot to turn 90 degrees to the right. Use lower speeds for better accuracy. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say 90 degree turn challenge, start challenge. Now it says 90 degrees to the right. Okay, if I do uh, turn right, let's try that. Let's turn turn right. I'm going to do a new file and turn right. Let's see what one rotation does. Download to robot. And I'll save this as Johnston 2. And I'll push play. Okay, so I went too far. So, and I'm actually going to slow it down. So again, it gets a little bit more accurate. And instead of rotations, I'm going to use degrees so I can get more accuracy here. It said suggested to use 270, so I'm going to try that. 270 degrees. And there you go. It gave me the 90 degree challenge. That was easy. Go back to the main menu. And go back to the website here and click next. Alright, and it's saying code review. So again, it's just saying make sure you look at everything here to see what it does. And that's just a review page. Click next. And we're doing the challenge, which is the orchard challenge. Again, it's a little video you can watch. It says uh, you're going to move through two rows of orchard trees represented as lines. The first line is straight on and the second two lines are at an angle but parallel. So this is a little different right here. Really what we want to do is just the Orchard Challenge 2.0. Um, so I'm going to go here and go to Orchard Challenge 2.0 and click Start Challenge. So I need to go forward, I need to go forward, left, uh, another left, forward, and then a really hard right, forward, a left, forward, a left, forward, a left, and then forward. And that's, that'll be good, right? So I need to do forward, left, forward, left. So let's, let's just throw that in the program real quick. I don't need this. I'm going to go forward, turn left, forward, turn left, forward. All right, so then that's going to get me pretty much to here, I think. So I'm going to go forward, turn left, forward, turn left, forward, and then I'm going to need to turn right. So I'm going to do a turn right, and then and that's going to be a really hard right I need to make. So probably one full rotation would work. Um, let's see. Turn right, and then forward, turn left, forward, turn left, forward, turn. So basically I can copy and paste all this stuff right here. I'm going to highlight it, I can do control C, do control V. Well, you know what, actually I'm going to undo that, control Z. I'm going to make sure that I get the right distances for these first. I'm going to estimate the first one is about three rotations, and the second one is maybe like one and a half rotations, and then this one would be three rotations also. Oh wait, no, that one would be like two rotations. This one would be like three rotations. And then forward, oh, turn left, sorry, one, one and a half rotations, and then three rotations. So this is going to be like the long leg, the turn, the short leg, the turn, the long leg, and then the turn right, which is going to be, actually I'm going to change it to one and a half. Oh, the turns, oh wait, these are less than, uh, a 90, remember we did was, we figured it was degrees, we figured it was like 270 degrees. That's what we had figured to get an exact 90. So then this one, I want to make a really, really hard one, so I'll do, four, say, 400 degrees. Let's try it. Download to the robot. Okay, and let's give it a shot. OK, 
Okay, so hopefully three rotations is enough. Oh no, it's not. It looks like probably need to double that. So let's say six rotations and then just download. Some of this is just trial and error. Okay, I'm gonna refresh and push play. All right. Ooh, six rotations. Not quite enough. Let's say six and a half, and I hate slow robots, so we're gonna change this to 100, because I'm getting tired of waiting for it. So download robot. All right, reset and push play. That's much better, much faster. Okay, looking good. Now that was too much of a turn. So these 270 degree turns, for some reason, in this robot, that's that's not working out. So let's say 265, or let's just say 260, and then maybe slow it down even. 260, 260, at 25. This is going to be 100. These are going to be 100. Oh, wait, and this one's going to be at 25. So. My turns are going to be super slow, and my straightaways are going to be fast, because my straightaways are fine to be fast. All right, here we go. We should make a slow 260 degrees on those motors. It looks like it's exactly what I need, 260 degrees. Nope, still too much, actually. So let's say uh, 255 degrees. 255 degrees. Download. It looks like those forward rotations on the short leg, the two forward rotations look like they're perfect. So I kind of lucked out on that one. All right, here we go, and left. Here we go, and left. Oh, 255 looks beautiful. Oh, but of course, I didn't go quite, I didn't go enough. Only with forward three rotations, I need to go three, uh, six and a half, right? 6.5. And then a 400 degree rotation looked like it was almost perfect. Almost exactly what I needed. So I'm gonna try it again. Again, this is really, a lot of this is just trial and error. It means you try it, you get it wrong, try again, get it wrong until you get it right. Yeah, I think that slowing that motor down for those turns really helped. Beautiful. At this point, if you notice where it is, it looks a lot like where it started, except for just a second row. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna just copy and paste all of that right there. Download it to the robot. Refresh. Push play. Here it goes. Cross your fingers. See what happens. Here he goes. Ooh, you know what? I'm thinking 400 might be too much. Yeah, see, I think 400 might be too much. Let's try 390 or 385, I think, maybe. Try again. So unfortunately, you gotta try wait each time. Here it goes. And 385 degrees instead of 400. Yeah, that looks like it's on a better track or a better course there. But for some reason, I think we're gonna need more than six and a half Let's do seven rotations, and then on the way back, you would need seven rotations also. All right, let's retry it, let's see what happens. Okay, I'm thinking this is what, my third or fourth try? Not counting those first few ones. Basically, I have the entire program now. Now it's just fine tuning getting the turns exactly the right way 
the distance is like this is seven instead of six and a half. And it looks like, yep, pretty much perfect. Ooh, it's getting close, but it gave it to me. Cool. All right, well, so that works. Um, and let's go back to the main menu. Let's go back to the website, click next. All right, at this point, upload the artifact. Okay, so you wanna make sure you click save over here. All right, and then upload the artifact. I named it Johnston 2, I think. Yeah, Johnston 2. Upload, upload artifact. All right, and then basically I just have the two quizzes and I've got my badge. That's all there was to it. Uh, and hopefully you guys get this done quickly.